Hey everyone, this is Kevin Doherty with Envision Solutions. Today I'm going to show you how to build a simple FAQ page for your website or for your client's website. We're going to use uh, WordPress as our CMS of choice and uh, we're also going to use probably one of our favorite plugins that we use on almost every project, which is Advanced Custom Fields. So you can see it right here. So I'd go to advancedcustomfields.com to learn more about what it can do for you. Uh, essentially it takes your WordPress to another level for, for CMS based capabilities and uh, taking meta fields to the next level. So hi highly recommend this. Uh, so essentially what we want to do is uh, use this plugin and uh, I'm not going to give a whole lot of background on this plugin just yet. I'm going to, I'm going to assume you have some basic knowledge of it. Uh, maybe in another video down the line, we'll get a little bit uh, behind the hood on this uh, plugin and, and show you some other use cases. Uh, but for now, uh, you can even follow along with the same premises uh, using just regular WordPress meta fields. We want to be able to uh, easily add a question and easily add an answer and to be able to have them uh, neatly and automatically format the questions at the top and uh, the answers below. And we want them to be able to be hyperlinked. So why don't, uh, why don't we create our fields, which is super simple right now. So we're going to name our field group FAQs, just something nice and descriptive. And we're going to add a field. Now, one of my favorite field types of this whole plugin. Now it is a, it is an add on, but worth the money. I forget how much the add on is, but I know it's not much and it's worth it. It's weight in gold. So it's uh, it's called the repeater add on. It does exactly what it says. It, it, it allows you to, uh, in the administration to, add multiples of something uh, and, and to change the order. And you can do it in groupings of, of other fields. So you can even have repeaters inside of repeaters. So you can get very inception like it's, it's pretty crazy. So we're going to do repeater and here's the, where the fun part comes in. So we can add uh, some subfields. So usually an FAQ page is comprised of two things, a question, And we'll give it uh, a text area field type. And we'll add another subfield here. And the second part is an answer. So for the field type on this one, I'd like to use the WYSIWYG editor. It just allows your uh, administrator to be able to add, you know, maybe some additional formatting that might help out in the answer or an, an extra link. Um, sometimes, giving that kind of control uh, can can backfire and you know users can accidentally abuse the the editor and and you know either add images that don't fit or, or extra media that aren't really necessary so um, I, I really love this option to be able to add a basic editor and even to be able to hide the upload media functionality but you know at least they can bold and italicize and uh, hyperlink so that's that's not nice. uh, minimum rows maximum rows we can just leave that as is um, the layout, this is just handy for the user interface when, when uh, entering in your FAQs. So we'll uh, choose row for that. And just to help out along, instead of add row, we'll make the label add FAQ. Uh, now this is a great part of uh, advanced custom fields as well. Um, we only want these questions, or sorry, these meta fields to be uh, present on our FAQ page. You know, so we're gonna do uh, page is equal to FAQ. So we've already created a page called FAQ. Now, um, you could also set up this for a custom post type. If you wanted to make a custom post type for your FAQs, there's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, might even be preferable if you wanted to easily uh, tie in another plugin to search it. Um, you know, I think just for the sake of this example, we'll just do a, a basic simple one uh, for, for pages. Um, there's some other options here to hide other fields on the page, but we'll leave that as is. And let's go ahead and click publish. All right, so if we go to our pages, FAQ, you'll see your regular content editor there. And if we scroll down, you'll see FAQs, add FAQ. So that's great. So just like you would think, let's click the add FAQ button. And this is our first question. And I'm just going to throw in a little bit of lorem ipsum here. I have a snippet key command using text expander for that. 
It's another uh, really helpful add-on, text expander. And why don't we add another question here? So another question and another, and give it a little bit of substance here and we can add an anchor link that goes to nowhere just for the sake of it. And why don't we bold that guy? All right, very cool. So why don't we go ahead and we'll update the page. And another really great thing here is to be able to change the sorting order. So you can see I can drag and drop the order of my FAQs. So you can see another question is up on top here. So really handy to be able to uh, change the sorting order of your. All right, so we'll update that again. Now, if we view the page, you can see we have nothing. So that's only because our template, our, our WordPress template hasn't accounted for those extra fields that we've just created. So that's what we're gonna do next. So why don't we switch over to our favorite text editor? All right. So here's our uh, page and we have the slug of our page FAQ here. So it inherits that. And if you wanna figure out how to call in that information, you can always go to ACF's page and uh, website and they have a lot of great code examples. So you can see here, here's a, a code example of how to get a repeater field and the subfields comprised within it. So what we wanna do is we want to uh, call in the questions. Uh, we want the questions to be links. And we also want to um, assign targeted anchor IDs uh, to the uh, hrefs of those links. And those are gonna lead, lead to the questions uh, below them, the questions and the answers below them. So first things first, what we're gonna do is we're going to check to see if the frequently asked questions uh, field grouping uh, exists. Now inside of there, we're going to do an ordered list. That way we can automatically number our, our questions. So um, I'm also going to use another cool plugin that I'm using on Sublime. So you might wonder how some of this stuff is auto expanding. It's called Emmet. It, it, it allows for uh, easy tag expansion using tab triggering. So, you know, for example, um, I want to add a, a, an ordered list with a class of questions. So all I have to do is ol.questions. And there we go, pretty cool. All right, so we're also going to uh, create a loop within our subfield. So here we have our loop that's going through our subfield uh, of frequently asked questions. So what we wanna do is create a list item and we want the list item to be an anchor to have an anchor inside of it and for now let's just use a pound symbol i'll uh, get back to how we're going to assign a unique id to uh, target uh, just in a little bit uh, but for now let's bring in at least the question so we're going to use the function the subfield And we named our field question, which is not to be confused with questions. Uh, that's a little habit I like to do. I, I whenever I use a repeater, I, I like the uh, the main field to be uh, plural, whereas uh, if it, if it shares a, a common descriptive name for the subfield, uh, that's when I use a singular. All right, very cool. So that in theory should be calling all of our questions in a list item right there. So why don't we go ahead and save the page and here's our faq page and why don't we refresh there we go this is our first question this is our second question so that's great so what we want to do next is why don't we uh, do that all over again but we'll bring in the answers and maybe we'll format the questions below a little bit differently 
All right. So now what we can do is we can essentially just copy and paste the exact same uh, syntax right here. So we'll scroll down. And instead of uh, the ordered list having a question, uh, why don't we just call it answers? And actually that class should probably be called questions. That should be pluralized as well. All right, so answers, uh, list item uh, again. So that's, that's no problem. Uh, whether you want it to be a list item or a div, you know, I, I, I'm inclined to call it, to leave it as a list item. You know, I would say in this case, why don't we wrap it with an H3 tag. All right. So we'll just make it a little bit more readable. And then, and what we want to do here is put the answer. Now, I didn't wrap the answer in p tags or any other tags just because we are using a WYSIWYG editor and that's automatically gonna add some paragraph tags for us. So that, that takes care of that. Now, one other thing that you'll find very common on a lot of um, FAQ templates is a, is a back to top. So at the top of our page, we already do have an anchor that I've put uh, there previously in my website. Uh, that's targeting uh, an anchor with the ID of top. And then we'll just go ahead and back to. All right, very cool. So why don't we go ahead and save that and refresh our page. Pretty cool. And actually I think that anchor link is a little redundant. I don't really think we want that to be an anchor link. So why don't we go ahead and get rid of that. There you go. So the one thing we aren't doing right now is targeting these anchor links, right? So the back to top is working just so I've already put that, that top anchor up on the page uh, in my header template. But what we wanna do is to be able to easily uh, click on a question and have it go to that uh, answer further down on our page. So it's actually pretty simple and it's a pretty common technique that uh, a lot of uh, developers use. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, before we start our loop, we're gonna declare a variable and we're gonna use it as a counter. And as we loop through the variable, it's going to iterate plus one every time and that's gonna give us a, u a unique number for every question uh, combination. Right above the loop, so we'll open up some PHP tags and we'll create a variable called i and we'll make it equal to one. All right, so just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to keep the pound symbol there for uh, ID, and we can even prefix it with, uh, let's say, Q for question, and we'll give it a dash. And we're going to echo that variable we just created uh, and we're going to append plus plus, and that's gonna add uh, one to uh, our integer of what the current variable is. So as it loops through, it's gonna go from one to two, two to three, and so on until uh, there's nothing less left to uh, loop through. And let's just close out our PHP. Um, and why don't we just save that for now, and we'll go back and refresh and we'll see if we can see a difference. Okay, so if you look in this, the uh, status bar at the bottom, you can see it's going from Q-1 to Q-2, pretty cool. Right, so now we essentially wanna do the exact same thing. We can just copy this, and then we can copy this, uh, Q equals, Okay, cool. And why don't we assign it to the title? So we'll create an ID equals Q dash uh, and then the, the variable uh, number. So we'll refresh that. There we go. 
Very cool. And just to show that the sorting is working, why don't we go back uh, to the admin? And we'll bring up another question, which is the second question to the top. And we'll just save our page. And then why don't we refresh? There we go, another question. Super easy. You can also download uh, the custom field templates. I'll go ahead and export them for you in case you guys wanna easily import them into your WordPress. So that's how you create a very basic custom FAQ template page.